So we have uh, another subject, two able assistants, Philip Melanchthon and John Colombard. We are just in, in the church history. And uh, I, I thought I will begin with uh, John Colombard. It is a little bit less known person. And uh, I, I thought because his course of understanding of the Lord's Supper is a little bit interesting. And uh, because uh, in one month we have also the Lord's Supper, I think it will be it will be interesting to see how his understanding of the Lord's Supper was developed. Uh, if we, uh, I, I took this uh, subject and that will be probably in, in two parts. If we uh, look to Philip Melanchthon, he was the assistant of Martin Luther and uh, John Ecolompadius was the assistant of Huldrich Zwingli. In e volume eight at uh, page 378, before describing the member of antitypical, antitypical Jacob who initiated the little flock movement that crown lost leaders perverted into the Baptist church, we should call attention to the fact that in starting each little flock movement which was later turned into a sectarian system while the Lord used one special brother most prominently, he always supplied him with an able assistant, apparently on the principle exemplified in the gospels in Jesus sending out his messengers two by two. And further on, thus St. John, was assisted by Polycarp, Irenaeus by Tertullian, Luther by Melanchthon, Swingley by Ecolompadius. And this assisting brothers were not negligible helpers by any means. In almost all cases, they wrought almost as fruitfully as their more fully used leading brothers. If we look to these two persons, I want to show similarities and differences of the assistance. Uh, similarities, both had Greek names translated from their original German names. Ecolompadius stands for Hausschein. His German name was Hausschein, Huskin or Husken. Melanchthon stands for the German na name Schwarzerd. And it was, uh, or in English, it would be Black Earth. And in Greek, translated, it was Melanchthon. Both were born in southern Germany, which was divided into many small states. Melanchthon was born in the electoral Palatinate town of Breton and Ecolompat in the Palatine town of Weinsberg. Both birthplaces are about 35 miles away. The map is showing Germany in 1789. Ecolompat pages studied in Tübingen where he met Melanchthon. Ecolompaid went to Tübingen half a year after Melanchthon. Melanchthon wanted to make with Ecolompaid and others an improved Aristotle edition, which failed. From 27th June 1519, the famous disputation took place between the two from Wittenberg, Karlstadt and Luther, and their opponent from Ingolstadt, Eck in Leipzig. The decisive insight gained from this event was that councils can err. Melanchthon published a report in the form of a letter 
to his older student friend, uh, Colombard. Melanchthon exchanged letters on the Lord's Supper with his old student friend, Ecolompard. And Ecolompard and Melanchthon agreed on 14 of 15 points at the Marburg religious discussion in 1529. Both spoke Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Ecolompadius did not consider himself suitable for the preaching ministry because of his weak voice. Melanchthon was about one meters 50, it is less than five feet tall, with a thin voice and a slight speech impediment. Ecolompard, and now we come to the differences. Ecolompard and Melanchthon had at the Marburg religious discussion in 1529 on one point the Lord's Supper, a different view. And the second is Ecolompard died in the same year as Swingley, whereas Melanchthon lived several years after Luther. The experiences of the deepest, I believe uh, uh, I go to E volume 12 and on page 100. 31. The experience of the deepest thinkers and most saintly characters during the Gospel Age and aid strengths to the claim that the Bible is deserving of examination as to whether it is a divine revelation. As examples of deepest thinkers who delved down into the deepest recesses of human thought in their search for religious truths and who found it in the Bible alone as a divine revelation, we might cite as outstanding examples the following. And there we have, among others, Zwingli, Ecolampadius, Luther, and Melanchthon. John Ecolampad, his life. He was born in 1382 in Weinsberg. He was born into a family, a family in Weinsberg and was the only surviving child in the family. He attended Latin school to prepare for university. At that time, the Latin school started at five o'clock in the morning. The Latin school teacher was educated at Heidelberg University and was under the influence of humanism. There were many humanists at Heidelberg University who criticized the Catholic church heresies and immorality. One of them was Jacob Wimferling, who quoted St. Jerome, who had translated the Vulgate. At the age of 17, in October 1499, Ecolompard went to the University of Heidelberg, studied until 1506. The father of Ecolompard wanted him to become a lawyer similar as it was in the case of the father of Luther. Ecolompard went to Bologna in Italy. To do this, he took all the family's money for his purposes and entrusted it to a man who was to serve that purpose. But this man disappeared with the money. So Ecolompadius had to go back to Germany and took up theological studies. Studying theology at that time, after five years listening, one was allowed to give an overview of the Old and New Testament. Thereafter, he could study dogmas. Thereafter, he studied two years the church fathers. In 1512, Ecolompard was a preacher in Weinsberg. He went six months later to Tübingen, then to Stuttgart, where he met Reuschlin and learned Greek. In Heidelberg, he learned Hebrew from a Spanish Jew. He went in 1515 to Basel, came shortly back to Weinsberg to go again 1516 to Basel. He was 1517 again in Weinsberg and left Weinsberg 1518 because of persecution in Weinsberg and went to Basel. 
However, the beginnings of the modern break between the theologian's preaching ministry and his university ministry can already be discerned in the first half of Ecolompard's life. For one cannot exactly claim that he held both ministries at the same time between 1512 and 1522. Rather, he fulfilled them alternately, partly in a restless life of wandering between Weinsberg, Heidelberg, and Basel. He preached Christ to the admiration of all. He was a very strict preacher. He had his lectures held on Good Friday printed. Uh, and and uh, it was published under the name Speeches of John Ecolompard on the Passion and the Last Sermon, the Seven Words of Our Lord Jesus Christ on the Cross under the image of a departing preacher, which words bear the title Testament of the Prince of Preachers. Ecolompard had difficulties with the closing of the Catholic priests. He found the priestly Catholic adornment inappropriate. He compares Christ as a preacher on the cross with the Catholic priest. How unlike Christ are our preachers. They sleepily care for the salvation of their hearers, conceal the truth, are dumb dogs, flatter, quarrel, bite the innocent, admire themselves, seek their own, not Christ. So many things Christ puts into the seven words. In them, he teaches us what we should hope for, what we should fear, what we should do, what we should flee. On the, on the right side, you see the, the church of Weinsberg today in which uh, Ecolombadius uh, uh, served. By presenting the whole Christian life as a life of communion with Christ, the one who suffered, died, and rose again, the legal work holiness, the external statutes of the Catholic Church are cut off at the root, and the true principle of the Christian life is revealed. Especially do the priests and rulers of the church dislike to hear the rebuke. They have tender ears are easily wounded. They love the flatterers and raise them to the highest honors. If a righteous man dares to exhort them to repentance and to speak the truth freely, he is scorned, jeered, at, cast out. They lay unbearable burdens on others and do not touch them with a finger. Ecolampard knows the gospel. He lives in it and seeks to assimilate it more and more. He fights against the corruption of the church. He was a preacher in Basel, Weinsberg, and again in Basel. The Golombard was called to the city of Basel as a preacher in 1515 and received his licentiate in 1516. Licentiate is an academic requirement in church higher education law to teach at church universities. In 1518, he became a doctor of theology. Basil Casuidel, leading priest, refuses to accept the Reformation. Wolfgang Capito was called from Münster as a preacher in 1512 to Basel and appointed professor of theology in 1516. When Erasmus came to Basel, he joined him. The bishop was a friend of the Reformation, and to enlarge the circle of educated people, Ecolompard was called to Basel by the bishop. Ecolompard had an unusual knowledge of the Hebrew language. Some things translated into Latin by Jerome in the Vulgate were not correct. For example, in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, uh, it is written, Hail Mary, full of grace, from which the Catholic Church deduced that Mary had more grace than she needed and could give it to others. 
the Greek New Testament came out here, hail, blessed art so. Erasmus at that time busy with the first edition of his notes on the New Testament and not very familiar with the Hebrew enlisted the help of Ecolampart. He had to had the quotations in the New Testament checked to see if they differed or agreed with those in the Old Testament. Later, Erasmus and Ecolampart took some different positions. In Basel, he was moved by doubts and fears. The great rift of, this, of his time also went through his soul. He returned to Weinsberg and took over the office he had left two years ago. He compared Jerome's translation with the Hebrew text, which he almost never let out of his hands. In Weinsberg, he often received letters from Melanchthon and was separated from Erasmus here. At that time, it was customary to tell jokes in the sermons at Easter to amuse the audience. Secular things were mixed into the services. As a result, the church lost the respect of the people and the reformation was initiated. Ecolampard fought against this custom and was criticized for it. He wrote against the Easter laughter. He wrote, if we blot out sins by laughter, what need we, what need we of repentance in sackcloth and ashes? Foolish was David also, who because of his sins wetted the camp with tears. But the apostle speaks, if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Or shall we earn reputation by joking? Erasmus wrote a letter to Ecolampart in March 1518, inviting him to come to Basel to help him with his second edition of the New Testament. Ecolampart was surely back in Basel in August 1518, but did not stay there long because Erasmus left Basel in September. After obtaining his doctorate, he followed a call as a preacher in Augsburg. He came to Augsburg at the end of November or beginning of December 1518. Ecolampart did not consider himself suitable for the preaching minister because of his weak voice. Aus Augsburg was the city of Jacob Fugger, the most important merchant in Europe at that time. Luther appeared 1519 in Augsburg. Ecolampart enjoyed Luther's writings. Eck claimed in one of his controversial pamphlets that in Augsburg only a few unlearned canons adhered to Luther. Ecolampart then wrote Eck an anonymous reply from the unlearned Augsburg canons by which Eck felt painfully struck. The Pope threatened that all Lutherans would be deprived of their property. On 23rd of April in 1520, Ecolampard entered a monastery where he remained until the end of 1521 or the beginning of 1522. Ecolampard asked the monks whether it was possible for him to live in the monastery according to the word of God. In the monastery, he wrote books like of the confession. Because of his publications, he was advised to flee. He also saw contradiction between the monastic life and the truths he recognized. Ecolampadus exhorted the friars not to respect their laws more than those of God. There are five preserved sermons of his which he preached in the monastery and which have been published. He was against the veneration of Mary and pointed to Christ, the only bread of life. He criticized that the Psalter of David had been turned into the Psalter of Mary and that they greeted Mary 10 times before they greeted the Lord once. In his sermon about Luke, second chapter, he showed that Simeon did not boast that he had served the temple so long with singing and praying, 
but that his eyes had seen the Savior. At Easter 1521, he speaks about the joy of the resurrection, gives an invitation to rejoice in the risen Savior, speak about the principles of repentance. The Columbard shows that through Christ, death reconciliation between God and man has happened once and for all. After that, Christ no longer suffers and dies. In the Catholic Church, on the other hand, the Mass increasingly acquired the meaning of the reconciling sacrifice. The Mass was seen as part of Christ's atoning activity. The daily sacrifice of the Mass for sins had to be renewed again and again. The Catholic doctrine was that just as Christ completed his work on the cross through the Mass, so the believer completes through subsequent works the work of justification initiated by the believing reception of Jesus. That is uh, uh, especially interesting. You see, the Catholic view was uh, that the, the offer of Christ was not enough. Uh, it, is, it was additionally needed, uh, the Mass, and uh, the justification is not, uh, not through faith, but there is something more needed. There are works needed for justification. That was the error which uh, Ecolompard saw in the teaching of the Catholic Church. In Ecolompard, doubts arose about the transformation of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. In vain, he sought comfort in the writing of the Church Fathers. Even the study of scripture left him at the loss. Since he could not get rid of his doubts, he saw himself as one rejected by God. To suppress his doubts, he preached the church doctrine, the opposite of the conviction imposed itself on him. But he said, faith constitutes our righteousness. Boldly I say it to you, faith is our justification. We must seek in the Lord's Supper and elsewhere, not only that Christ may descend to us as it were from heaven, but that we too may seem to ascend to him in heaven, where we shall see his glory, where he will impart to us the treasures of divine wisdom, said Ecolompard. Thus Ecolompard holding fast to the justifying faith boldly surpasses the sacrifice of the mass of the mass and the eucharistic christ how shall we honor him for this the lord does not ask anything difficult of us he does not oblige us to go many days without eating he does not oblige us to go on pilgrimages to sing psalms he says to this in, to, he says, do this in remembrance of me. What is easier? What is cheaper? For Thanksgiving, we will voluntarily offer ourselves of our own accord. We will endure dangers for the sake of his name. We will rejoice in affliction and tribulation. The Lord's Supper is nothing else but the remembrance of the single sacrifice which was once offered on the cross. There is only one sacrifice, the same in so many centuries and in so many places, because it is only the memory of the one sacrifice. And this memory is our thanksgiving. There is nothing else we can do. So let us have grateful remembrance and keep the benefits of Christ in our hearts as graven and marble and undefiled. Ecolompard professes Irenaeus, a star member of the Church of Smyrna. Uh, he professes the view of Irenaeus that the Lord's Supper is the basis for the resurrection and reward of the Church. The idea of the Lord's Supper is communion, teaches Ecolompard. What love for Christ do we show when we do not accept those for whom he laid down his life? 
The Gulumpad puts a new sense to the Lord's Supper. It is the idea to the once happened sacrifice of Christ. In the beginning, he still held like Luther, the view of consubstantiation, the real presence of the body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. The Gulumpad wrote a treatise on confession, which Luther wrote to Melanchthon would be a plague to the Antichrist. He noted that confession was not common in ancient times, nor did Christ command it. Confession was introduced gradually until Innocent made it law in the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215. Based on the faith that adheres to the merit of Christ, he realized that monasticism is opposed to this faith, denies its justifying power, and sets up a righteousness of works. For Ecolum part, the ensuing persecution caused his resignation from the monastery. He was leveled an apostate and heretic because of his resignation of monastery as well as because of his writings and therefore had difficulty finding a place to live. In vain, he offered his services to the University of Heidelberg. It demanded certain renunciation of Luther's opinions. In 1522, after fleeing from the monastery in he stayed in a castle near Bad Kreuznach. So we uh, heard uh, today uh, a sermon from Brother Wajinski, who said that uh, God concealed um, uh, his in, in the tabernacle, uh, uh, according to a psalm. So we see that not only Luther was concealed, but also in the same time as Luther, also here in this case, Ecolum Part was concealed on this castle you can see on the right side. 1522, after fleeing from the monastery, he stayed in a castle near Bad Kreuznach. Friends von Sickingen took him into his castle. In this one can in this one can see the positive attitude of the German princes towards the Reformation. Luther was also hidden in Wartburg Castle until March 22 in 1522. After Luther came out of his hiding place and was not attacked, Ecolompadius decided to come out of hiding as well. In the fall, in the fall of 1522, he went to Basel. At the castle in Bad Kreuznach, he became a preacher. In a letter from the castle, he writes, Christ is our freedom. If we confess and assert him, putting ourselves behind, it will be well with us everywhere and again will be to us what most mortals fear. With this, he took a decisive step into a new career in another world. As much as there is in us, we should certainly have peace with all men, but be careful, lest seeking peace above measure, we lose Christ, who came to bring not peace, but this world. At the castle, he preached in German instead of Latin. He quoted the following passages. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in parables. I wish that our Lord Jesus Christ himself would speak to us not in parables, nor in a foreign language, but in an understandable way. What is more glorious than the word of God? By the power of the word of God, 
you go out of darkness into light. The word of God preceded us in the desert of this life, like the pillar of the fire through the night. He said goodbye to France and traveled to Basel, where he arrived on 16th November, 1522. Three days after his arrival, he wrote to his friend Capito, pray with me to God that I may be granted to stay here even for a while so that I do not have to just wander around, but his will be done, not mine. And it was exactly uh, as, as he expressed it in, in, in this words, he was a traveler. He was a traveler. He never stayed on one place in, in, in this 10 years in, in between 1512 and 1522. He was in, in Weinsberg, in Heidelberg, in Basel, and always on the way and the travel in, on, in this years was a little bit more difficult than in our days. It is just, uh, uh, there is a, the highway, the so-called Autobahn, and uh, just last week I went this way uh, to my office in work. It is uh, uh, near the place uh, Ecolombard was born. Ecolombard was a highly educated expert of Hebrew and Greek. As such, he came to Basel without money in November 1522 and stayed in Cretender's house. He had nothing. Even his glasses he left in the monastery. Also his church disowned him. But this is how God used him. This is how he was God's instrument. In Basel, he first took a job as a proofreader with an old publisher of his. There was a small church where he helped out a priest in the evening with sermons. Basel had about 10,000 inhabitants at that time. A month later, he gave lectures on Isaiah and German for lay people at the university, which he then repeated in Latin for scholars. The preaching in German caused a sensation. People never heard anything in German in their lives. Up to 400 people came to hear him. They came from a way up to 100 kilometers ridden on horses. The university tried to get rid of him and asked the city assembly to expel Ecolampadios from the city. The Pope also wanted anyone who preached reformatory things to be expelled from the city. The council of the city of Basel decided against the will of the university to make him a professor. After six months in Basel, he was a preacher in the church and a professor at the university. He now also published the true word of God in which he published all the statements of the church fathers about the Lord's Supper. And this is also interesting. He was, was confronted with uh, the thoughts of the Catholic Church, with the teaching of the Catholic Church, studied the church fathers, and he found nothing of, of the practice of the mass or other things the Catholic Church teached in, in, in his times. So instead of finding a proof for the Catholic teachings, uh, in the Church Fathers, he found the real truths about the Lord's Supper, and uh, uh, he showed that they did not have the Catholic understanding of the Mass. The meeting in Marburg, I had uh, also discussed previously in a sermon about Swingley. Here uh, we see that uh, Ecolompard 
had now the right view of the Lord's Supper and he um, was convinced that the bread and the wine was only a picture of, uh, of Christ's body and blood. And uh, other, on the other side, Luther had the wrong idea um, that the that uh, in 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 the bread and the wine uh, is the real Christ's uh, blood and body. In E, volume eight, at uh, page sixty ninety two, it was Swingley who, in fifty twenty one, began to blow forth the silver trumpet, proclaim the message that the Lord's Supper represents the death of Jesus, faith appropriating justification from the merit of his humanity and life laid down unto death and the fellowship of the consecrated in suffering. So he did not understand this as implying the church share in the sin offering, which it actually does. His proclaiming this message quickly brought to his side Ecolompadius as a special companion, helper, and others who joined him in the proclamation and this resulted in the widespread little flock movement, having the pertinent, pertinent doctrine as its keynote. So, dear brethren, there are, uh, the time is over. There's another citation in e volume eight on uh, page 190 on this, citation of Ecolombard on the Weinsberg church in which he preached. The exaltation of the church does not consist in gold and silver, not in luxuriant splendor of this world, but in faith, in perseverance, in love, in the power of works, and in living deeds, so in gifts and grace. And so far, we could see this uh, example of a man seeking the truth who assisted Swingley in his work for the church. May this example be a blessing for us. Thanks.